Harvey Milk, and I'm here to recruit you. Harvey Milk's story hits the silver screen. 30 years after his assassination, a gay icon is reborn. It was trippy. I find it inspiring. The reaction, the immediate reaction was this. There's always woulda, coulda, shoulda. The star-studded cast speaks out about the movie, about the man, about the gay sex scenes with Sean Penn. I did drink a few tequilas. Who was the real Harvey Milk? I have to be there to open up for the dialogue for the sensitivities of all people. Why he was right for his time and right for ours. Shot and killed. The shocking announcement. I was just numb. Harvey was lying on the floor. Nobody knew what to do. Harvey Milk's office is no longer where it once was. Now. A look at the real movie location. San Francisco's current mayor sitting just steps away from the scene of the crime. Does it ever creep into your mind? Oh. Parallels between Harvey's fight then and the fight for gay marriage rights now. That tawdry, tired, lying legacy has reared its head again. And a special in-depth film review from San Francisco icon Jen Wall. What were you worried about? This was a risky role. What did he say to you? I was surprised. A 365 special, Harvey Milk, The Man and the Movie, starts now. Welcome to the Castro, the center of the gay community and the center of Harvey Milk's life. Good evening, everyone. I'm Ross Palumbo from CBS News. The movie Milk, depicting Harvey's life, premiered right here at the Castro Theater. But the true story of who Harvey was as an activist and as a gay icon premiered about a block away from here at a little camera shop with, of course, a lot of hope. Long before the movie. We could have a revolution here. Before the stars, the screenplay, the historic scenery. Shot and killed. Before the real life murder. Before the mayhem, the emotions, the ongoing movement. Before all of that, there was simply Harvey, the 70s, and San Francisco. He was not a saint. Harvey was a very compassionate person. He was not a genius. The most charismatic person I ever met. His personal life was often in disarray. We hit it off beautifully. Right and away. yet, by his example and by his actions, he most certainly changed the world. That picture of change developed here at Harvey's camera shop on Castro and 18th. He and lover Scott Smith moved from New York in 1972, and soon after, Milk tried to make another move. I saw him on the street. He was campaigning. Neighboring business owner Martha Aston remembers it beginning with a merchants association. This is a brochure that Harvey and I worked on together. And while she worked in her hardware store, she saw Harvey using his tools, concern, commitment, charisma. He was a charismatic person. To build and fashion a bigger political future. This guy is talking to me. He's the first person who I've ever heard that's not giving me a line, is not throwing a line of bull at you. And I said, I can, I can get behind this person. The city wouldn't get behind Milk, though, during his first three campaigns. Too many things happening nobody knows about. But even knowing that, three losses later, he stood up a fourth time for city supervisor. On November 1st, 1977, the entire Castro finally stood with him. First gay supervisor elected in San Francisco, his name is Harvey Milk. First of all, congratulations, and I've never seen anything like this, Harvey. Oh, it's all, all over the city tonight. His problem solving immediately made headlines. Milk put his foot down. From his hilarious dog ordinance, to his historic city ordinance banning discrimination based on sexual orientation, to his huge defeat of the Briggs Initiative, a measure that would have banned openly gay teachers. He chose to stand up for what he thought was right. I think there's no question but that his passion was the civil rights of gay people. But other passions soon surfaced. Fellow supervisor Dan White was the only supervisor who voted against Harvey's anti-discrimination law. And just four days after the Briggs Initiative failed, White resigned his city supervisor seat. Days later, he wanted it back. And when he didn't get it, Dan White got the mayor for shooting George Moscone in his office, then going after and shooting Harvey Milk. I was just... Numb. Harvey was lying on the floor. Nobody knew what to do. Diane Feinstein is on the two. It's my duty to make this announcement. And she is coming apart. Both Mayor Moscone and Supervisor Harvey Milk 
have been shot and killed. The entire world watched. Residents wondering why their mayor and a city supervisor were gunned down. The bodies of Mayor George Moscone and Supervisor Harvey Milk. And San Francisco mourned. I didn't know him personally, but it feel like I know him personally. Yeah. I feel a great sense of loss. Milk's light was violently extinguished. But thousands of new lights were then carefully lit. He knew that our time would come, and our time is now. In his own words, I can be killed with ease. I can be cut right down. But I cannot crawl back into my closet. Forty years old, and I haven't done a thing. For decades since Milk's death, Hollywood had done very little. We need one of our own in office. We could have a revolution here. But 30 years later to the day. My name is Harvey Milk, and I'm here to recruit you. His story rises to the big screen. All men are created equal. No matter how hard you try, you can never erase those words. It's told with Sean Penn, with an incredible cast. I want you to know I'm proud of you. But from its proud beginning, what do you think of my new theater? It's clear that history is the true star. It was unique for me just to be involved in such an important project and then to be shooting in the exact location where all these events happen. You know, I remember when your birthdays were you know, less lavish and a little more intimate. To be shooting in that kind of place was uh, pretty amazing. Does it make a big difference in your performance, do you think? Do you think it inspires you even more? I think it does add uh, a little color. You do feel it. Milk's original camera shop was even rented out and refurbished for the film. That's our new campaign manager. Having an entire block set up to look like 1978 and then walking along the next block and seeing 2008 Castro, it was, uh, it was trippy. <laughs> but the trip back to play real historic characters was for some the most moving. You met Clee Jones, obviously. Yeah. And what, yeah. what's that like as an actor, to meet someone that you have to duplicate, right? I think it helped me a lot. I could always just ask Cleve, and he could tell me. I'd say, Cleve, what did you think about that one guy when that one guy said that one thing? And he'd say, oh, I thought this. And i go, oh, OK, well, that, then that sounds pretty good to me. Bit over the top. Did he ever come up to you and tell you how you did? Yeah, he, he was really happy, actually. Cleve Jones was happy, but sometimes haunted by the perfect portrayals, specifically of Penn playing Harvey. I got goosebumps, I cried, and I laughed. Harvey's voice was clear in it. I could hear Harvey saying the, the, the words to see Sean Penn go into a trailer and come out as Harvey Milk. Dan White is just uneducated. He'll teach him. Hey, Harvey. Uh, committee meets at 9.30. To see Josh Brolin become Dan White before our eyes was just, you know, extraordinary. When I saw Cleve, the, the reaction, the immediate reaction was this, you know. <laughs> From the very beginning, there are several intimate scenes between James Franco and Penn and between Penn and Diego Luna. <laughs> closeness and the intimacy. Was it difficult? I did drink a few tequilas before doing the scene and, and that helped. Uh, but Sean, is a, he, it's, it's a really sweet and nice guy, I mean, so, so it, it was easy. Their performances may seem easy and effortless, but most of the material and most of the tragic subject matter is not. You're not like most homosexuals, I am. The movie, of course, deals with assassination and death. It's intense. Something the current mayor of San Francisco says still scars his office. It's intense on so many levels because the same door that I use all the time is the door that Dan White used to walk down after he killed Mayor Moscone and walk down the hall casually and calmly and then killed Harvey Milk. Not much has changed at the historic crime scene. Uh, the desk would have been on that side, but every mm -hmm. single thing you see in here is exactly the way it was. And history, Newsom says, is still close at hand. I walk right over, not by, the spot where he was gunned down. But across these halls, the spot where Harvey Milk met his end has changed. Harvey Milk's office is no longer where it once was. Now this office is the clerk of the Board of Supervisors. But if you go inside and walk over here to the back of the office, you can get a sense of where his office looked out onto. That back there 
was probably his window. And the view from there now, for everyone Harvey left behind, has also changed. Even though he was savagely, uh, you know, uh, ripped from our lives, the message was there. Even though he made the ultimate sacrifice for it, it was a good thing. I think Harvey gave people hope. Without hope, life is not worth living. A whole new generation of kids. You've got to give them hope. Are going to see the movie and think, wow. You've got to give them hope. Coming up, the struggle started by Harvey is far from over. The fight over gay marriage brings it all right back here to the Castro.